Hey, it's Mike here, and today, autoimmune diseases. In particular, the research on how a vegan diet can prevent certain ones and how one aspect of a vegan diet can potentially help them all. And we're gonna focus on one very interesting mechanism of how inputs from your diet can trigger autoimmune diseases. And we're gonna cover a bunch of diseases from type one diabetes to multiple sclerosis to rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease and more. And finally, after we go through all the research at the end, we're gonna look at some cases of real people who massively improved or reversed their autoimmune diseases. All right, let's go come to Nerdland. For those that aren't familiar, autoimmune diseases are a wide range of diseases where your body attacks itself, where your immune system sort of malfunctions and mistakes foreign invaders for your own tissues and attacks them. All right, now that you have a PhD in autoimmune diseases, I wanna manage some expectations here and just quickly mention that obviously not all autoimmune diseases can be prevented by a vegan diet. A lot of them are not triggered by diet at all initially. And also that while we have a good scientific connection for a lot of these diseases and the steps, some of them are a bit more theoretical and I'm gonna try and distinguish those. Obviously they all haven't been studied in the detail that we like, we need more research. And when you consider how many diseases there are, it's no wonder. I mean, look at this list, it just keeps going. Then you have poly autoimmunity where it's multiple diseases together. Anyway, let's move on. Let's go. Now we're going to look at what is probably the main mechanism for triggering autoimmune diseases, and that is molecular mimicry. Oh uh, yeah. Hey, this is my Mickey Mouse impression. Do I look like Mickey Mouse? I mean, do I look like Mickey Mouse? Yeah, man, that, that's great. But, but no, it's not like that. It's where a foreign invader protein makes it into your bloodstream. And that protein happens to be similar to some tissue in your body and your immune system mistakes it for your own tissue. So when it tries to kill and clear that foreign protein out of your system, it's actually killing your own proteins in your body. And for some background, the foundation of this goes back to 1966, where two scientists realized that the cell membrane structure on streptococcus or strep throat had remarkable similarities to mammalian muscle protein sequences. And the lesson here is that life has many similarities. They might be thinking, oh my gosh, are all infections gonna end up being autoimmune diseases? Well, back to this study, no, it turns out that 99.7% of infections probably don't become autoimmune diseases down the line. So that's at least comforting. And moving on through time, it became clear that a lot of mammalian proteins, for example, that we eat are similar to our own proteins. And it makes sense that infections would make it into your bloodstream because they're breaking the rules. But how do these dietary proteins make it into your bloodstream? And that brings me to your digestive system. Through digestion, if all goes well, we usually break down proteins into really small amino acid chains, peptides that are often just two or three amino acids long. And we can deal with those in our bloodstream. Our body is used to that. But if we have a breakdown of our gut lining, our intestinal barrier function becomes compromised then larger proteins can end up in our bloodstream pretty intact. And you can see right away where a vegan diet is huge here because that higher fiber content protects your gut lining. And in addition to that, from this study, vegans tend to have less potentially pathogenic bacteria, which can break down your gut lining as well. So it's win-win. Now moving on to our bloodstream, it turns out that our immune cells don't exactly have 20-20 vision and can mistake foreign proteins for our own. Our bloodstream is kind of like a highway of retired Florida drivers. Just say it. Do, do, do. Oh look, it's Taco Bell, Dolores. Let's pull over. Welcome to Taco Hell, the Tex-Mex metal bar. Can I take your order? Oh my, looks like we didn't make it to heaven after all, Dolores. Should have gone to church more. For a specific dietary example, as scientists proposed decades ago, there is a particular amino acid sequence in cow's blood that looks quite a bit like an amino acid sequence in human collagen. So could that be the trigger for rheumatoid arthritis, which is a autoimmune attack on your own joints? And we will cover rheumatoid arthritis in more detail in a bit, but first how the attack works. The attack dogs of our bloodstream sort of code an amino acid sequence that describes the invader within our bloodstream, but when they see something similar enough, they go for it. Like how Snoodles the Rottweiler hates all men and tries to shred them. Yeah, Tina's ex was a real douche, but use some discernment, Snoodles. Be like Mary Poppins over here, who can tell the difference between some human collagen proteins and some bovine serum proteins. How's Tina gonna find a new man, Snoodles? And as this study on molecular mimicry mentions, for there to be a valid connection between the foreign protein 
and a disease. Scientists want at least four criteria. One, similarity between the human and the trigger protein. Two, they wanna measure the antibodies to those proteins in people's systems. Three, the epidemiological connection, you know, the population disease rates with higher exposure. And four, which is brutal, animal testing to show that you can give the disease to an animal. For an example, one disease that has all four of these connections fully mapped out is multiple sclerosis with the trigger buterophilin, which is a cow's milk protein. Multiple sclerosis, as you may know, is an autoimmune disease where your body attacks the coating around your brain cell and motor control degenerates. And from this study in the Journal of Immunology, here is the amino acid sequence in the dairy protein, buterophilin, next to the sequence in the myelin sheath protein that coats your brain cells. And I mean, they both say Irger. What more proof could you want? Now I have an entire video on this, but it's worth mentioning Roy Swank who put his patients with MS on a low animal fat diet and found that there was a stopping of the progression of the disease in 95% of the patients at a 34 year follow-up. And if patients gave up, they would relapse with MS symptoms. And Roy Swank believed that there was another step that was going on here in the development of MS. And that was the breakdown of the blood brain barrier because these antibodies in your bloodstream can't just go into your brain because they're too large, much like those larger proteins in your digestive system. But he believed that a high level of saturated fat would create a fatty bloodstream where you'd have pockets of low oxygen that could break down the blood brain barrier and let those sort of brain stripping antibodies in, which would of course result in the damage. He even had a 50 year follow-up where amazingly 13 out of 15 of the surviving patients were still walking. And he mentioned, quote, MS is in all probability caused largely by saturated animal fat. Moving on to the next autoimmune disease, I would argue that we now have all four criteria for type one diabetes as well. A1 beta casein in cow's milk is the likely offender here, but bovine insulin is also a suspect for criteria number one. We have the similarity that beta casein breaks down into casomorphin, which yes, is also the offender in my cheese addiction video that I talk about. And that has a four amino acid sequence that is identical to GLUT2, which is a glucose transporter that resides in the cells that create insulin on your pancreas. So it appears that your body makes antibodies to get rid of those casomorphins and instead turns around and bombs your own pancreas. Criteria number two, we have studies like this one showing the elevated levels of antibodies to casomorphin in people with the disease. For number three, we have the epidemiological link. This is a very compelling chart of milk consumption rates by country, though yes, it is correlation. More convincingly, we have this study that looked at siblings and found that the siblings that drank the most milk had five times the rate of type one diabetes. And criteria four, the final one recently from 2018, this study demonstrated that feeding mice casomorphin increased their type one diabetes rate. And now looking to vegan populations, the Adventists had a 50% lower rate of type two diabetes but when they looked at all diabetes together, it was up near a 80% lower rate. So it's clear that there's a way lower rate of type one diabetes and it's likely from the lower exposure to cow's milk, but we don't really know. Now for the next disease, I wanna loop back to rheumatoid arthritis and go a little bit more into detail here. Remember I talked about cow's blood in particular, it was bovine serum, which is not just in all of those cow meat products, it's also in cow's milk. But in terms of the meat, these researchers observed some meat-induced rheumatoid arthritis attacks, and that's possibly because of this bovine serum. And in terms of a vegan diet, we do have this trial that put people on a vegan diet. The rheumatoid arthritis score improved in 40% of the patients, and they said that it was likely due to a reduction in immunoreactive food antigens due to the change in diet. And it wasn't the biggest, longest trial ever, and they didn't see improvement in everybody, which just speaks to how there are a lot of different potential triggers for different autoimmune diseases. And another potential one for rheumatoid arthritis is E. coli. There may also be a cross reactivity between E. coli proteins and our joints. And where do we get E. coli from a lot? It's an animal pathogen. We get it from animal products. If somebody's processing raw meat, raw chicken or anything, their surfaces in their kitchen are gonna be covered in this stuff. And as this study mentions, vegans do have lower levels of E. coli in their gut, which points to a lower exposure. But still, as long as 95% of our population is eating meat, then we're gonna get people who aren't eating meat and everybody as a society exposed to 
a lot of E. coli. And beyond that, there are a lot of diseases that are zoonotic or animal derived that lead to autoimmune diseases potentially. Another example is Yersinia enterocolitica, which has some similar proteins to some thyroid proteins, which is why as this study found, we see higher levels of antibodies to that microbe in people with Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroiditis and Graves' disease, both autoimmune thyroid diseases. Yersinia enterocolitica has been isolated from a variety of animals with pigs being the most common source. There's also Myobacterium avium paratuberculosis, which is not a Harry Potter spell. I'm sorry. It's actually an infection that's linked to Crohn's disease, not as fun. Crohn's disease is an inflammatory bowel disease where your body attacks your own gut lining. And this particular bacteria you can be exposed to through cows in general or cow's milk, particularly the unpasteurized raw milk, which is becoming so popular nowadays. As this study mentions, there could be a risk of infection from dairy farm runoff. And from this study, people who get this infection are four to eight times more likely to get Crohn's disease. Now this next one is a bit of a niche neurological disease, which is a little bit sensitive, kind of a graphic description. So feel free to just skip ahead like 20 seconds if you need to. And I will say it's an example of how people's decision to eat meat ends up affecting other people, even workers in that industry. And that is that slaughterhouse workers who are working at the sort of pig brain removal station that they can end up with a neurological autoimmune disease because that pig brain sort of becomes aerosolized into the air and they're exposed to it and then their body creates antibodies to fight that which are really similar to your own brain and then you get the disease. This study found that 75% of brain disease workers had antibodies in their system to their own brain cells, the sheath around their brain cells once again. And with this well-documented information, I can't help but wonder what other parts of animals that we're eating can cross-react with our own cells and we have such a widespread consumption of animals, it might be hard to isolate these connections. For example, does a pig thyroid that ends up being ground up in lunch meat and sausages and so forth lead to an attack on your own thyroid? Or does eating all of that chicken cartilage on those drumsticks lead to attacking your own joints? We clearly need more research on this, but looking to all of these animal-based infections, we kind of need to recognize that by eating all these animals, by raising 70 billion land animals a year, we're putting our whole society at a risk of the secondary stages of these infections, which are actually way longer lasting autoimmune diseases, which are starting to more or less plague our country. Now we need to be aware that virtually all of our top 10 food pathogens come from animal products and that this should be considered an autoimmune disease risk. It just should. So maybe thinking, yeah, Mike, this is all good information for maybe getting lucky and preventing a autoimmune disease. But what about if you already have one? And that brings me to inflammation. Inflammation and autoimmune diseases are like this. And looking to studies on vegans, they have 30% lower levels of inflammation markers than people that eat meat. And if you take somebody, put them on a vegan diet, that same result happens as well. And it's also worth noting that you can go probably even lower in terms of inflammation on a vegan diet if you make sure that you're focusing on your omega ratios, eating too many omega-6s from all those processed oils, most of which are high omega-6. You gotta eat more omega-3s like chia and flax, and that's just one more reason to stay away from all those processed foods. All right, we're about to look at cases of real people who reversed certain autoimmune diseases, sometimes got rid of them entirely, but I just wanna mention that no, not everybody that goes vegan is gonna immediately see an improvement or possibly an improvement at all in their autoimmune disease. I wish that was the case. And also, of course, vegans can get autoimmune diseases. We know there's all those triggers and we know we're taking all of these medications that break down the gut barrier and so forth. We just know that there's a strong case for improvement here. All right, let's look at the first one. We have this woman who had crippling rheumatoid arthritis where the pain was so excruciating that she couldn't sleep, stand, sit, walk, or basically anything sometimes. The doctor actually laughed at her when she said she was gonna switch her diet. And she saw her doctor when she had hardly any pain at all and was feeling great. He couldn't believe it, ordered blood work, and the results came back normal. We also have several cases of people reversing their lupus, which is amazing. And that's an autoimmune disease where your body attacks itself in a variety of places. From this one, quote, for the first time in two decades, I am 100% free of lupus medication. And to another one, quote, only four months after changing my diet, 
and my lupus tests came back negative. Here's one of many MS cases, just the title, quote, I used to have MS relapses every six months. After going plant-based, I haven't relapsed in 10 years. And I'll end on this woman who had horrible Crohn's disease since the age of 12, went on a vegan diet, felt amazing, and literally blew her doctor's mind who said her blood work is phenomenal. So in the end, there are two sides of autoimmune diseases here. We have the prevention and we have the management for people that already have the disease. And if you're going on a vegan diet, you're preventing your exposure to a variety of foreign proteins, whether they're dietary or potentially animal-based infections. You, know, you have that healthier gut wall, which could prevent things from happening in the first place. And you're also not paying people to kill animals and maybe end up getting pig brain disease. Let's not forget the serious benefit of not harming animals. And then finally, you have that lower inflammation levels, which theoretically should help every single autoimmune disease, but who knows? So let me know down below if there are any other autoimmune diseases that you would have liked to hear about that I didn't talk about in this video and just what you think about this in general. And feel free to like and subscribe, check out my Patreon, support me if you want to, and I'll see you in the next video. Right, bye.